In this video, I'm going to be working out an individual integral. We're going to take a look at the integral of sine x over 1 plus sine x dx. I have put some trig identities over here in the right-hand corner, just so that when I do those substitu substitutions, you'll know where that's coming from. Um, Pythagorean identity here, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. That's a pretty common one. If I solve for cosine squared x, that's going to be equal to 1 minus sine squared x. If I so uh, solve for the sine squared x, that'll be equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. All right, so um, I will be using those substitutions um, throughout this, so I wanted to make sure and point that out before we start. Okay, so to start with, probably the easiest way to handle this is to take a look at this um, denominator and realize that you can force a difference of two squares. I can multiply by the conjugate, all right, which is going to be a form of 1, and so I won't be altering the original integral at all here. So I'm going to have the sine x on the top, the 1 plus sine x on the bottom. All right, then I'm going to choose to multiply by a form of 1, 1 minus sine x over the 1 minus sine x, all right, and then dx. All right, and doing that forces this difference of two squares here on the bottom. All right, this is the factored form of a difference of two squares, so you can foil that back out, and it makes for... Um, a nice easy way to multiply and simplify denominator there. So I'll have the integral of on the top here. I think I'll go ahead and distribute that sine. So we'll have a sine x minus a sine squared x. On the bottom, foiling this out, I'll just have a 1 minus sine squared x and then we'll have a dx. All right, now it's at this point that I'm going to do a lot of substitutions. All right, right here, I've got the 1 minus sine squared x, which we see right there. So I can substitute a cosine squared right there in the bottom. And then right here, I've got minus a sine squared x. So I've got a sine squared x right there. So I can substitute this binomial in here for that one. So I'm going to be doing those two substitutions. So let's come all the way over here. I'll have the integral of that original sine x is going to stay put. I'm going to be minus. And then since I'm putting a binomial in, I'll need to be sure and put parentheses around that. 1 minus cosine squared x. And then all over, making that substitution on the bottom, I'll have the cosine squared x and then my dx. Okay, now at this point, I want to break this up into three individual integrals. It's going to be easier to work out that way. And keep it in mind, distributing that negative will make that 1 a negative, and then we'll make that cosine squared x a positive. All right, so breaking it up into three individual integrals here, we'll have the integral of sine x over cosine squared x dx. The middle one will be a minus the integral 1 over cosine squared x dx. And then doing the last one, keeping in mind that negative times that negative will make it a positive integral of cosine squared x over cosine squared x dx. All right, now having those three individual ones, this is the only one that I will have to use a u substitution on. This one we will substitute. 1 over cosine squared x is going to be a secant squared x, and we can integrate that real easy. And then this having the cosine squared x over cosine squared x, well, that really simplifies down to a 1. All right, so let's focus on the u substitution for this one right here. Okay, we're going to let u be the cosine x. So we're going to let u equal cosine x. Then when I take the derivative of both sides, du is negative sine x dx. If I go ahead and solve all the way down for dx, I'll have a du over a negative sine x equaling my dx. Okay, that's going to allow me to then come up here and work on this integral here. I'll have the integral. The sine x will still be there. On the bottom, since I let u be cosine, I'll have a u squared. All right, replacing the dx with what it equals, I'll have a du over a negative sine x. 
All right, now let's go ahead and make our substitutions on the other two before I simplify here. This will still be a minus. 1 over cosine squared x, that's going to simplify to just a secant squared x dx. And then anything over itself is always 1, so this will just be the integral of 1 dx. These two are going to be straightforward. We still have a little bit more work to do here. Um, I'm going to pull out the negative out in front, and then the cosine in the top, and the cosine in the bottom is going to cancel. So I'll have a negative out in front, the integral of u squared, uh, wait, 1 over u squared, almost missed that there, du. Uh, I'm not going to integrate these till I get this one ready to integrate. So then we'll go ahead and leave this the integral of secant squared x dx and we'll leave this the integral of 1 dx. All right, now the easiest way to integrate this is to take that u squared and move it up to the numerator and make it a negative exponent. So then I'll have negative the integral of u to the negative 2 du. And again, I don't want to integrate these till I'm ready to integrate them all at the same time. So we'll just rewrite the rest of this line. Okay, now I can now integrate this. We've got the negative that's sitting out in front, so we need to make sure that's there. Add 1 right here, that's going to give me a negative 1, and then I'll have a u to the negative 1. All right, integrating secant squared, that one you should have memorized, that one's just going to be a tangent x, and integrating 1 with that dx then is going to give me an x. And since I have now performed all three integrations, I can add the plus c. Now, would be um, wise to simplify this a little bit and to replace the u with that cosine, and we'll do that all in one step. So that negative times that negative makes a positive. Moving this down to the bottom will give us a 1 over, and substituting that u then for the cosine x. All right, and then minus the tangent x, and plus the x, and then plus the c. So having a final answer right there. So a pretty straightforward um, integral after you catch the very first move of needing to multiply by that um, conjugate, and then seeing, okay, well, what kind of substitutions do I really need to do and use? Usually anything with um, your trig uh, functions, you're, you're going to rely heavily on trig substitutions there from Pythagorean identities to um, almost anything, 1 over cosine being one of your reciprocal identities there. So you just really have to be familiar with all those trig formulas. Definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, uh, please share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to hit that uh, bell notification. Thanks.